Hey everyone, it is Friday and you guys know what that means here. That means it's classic tabletop RPG Friday and we are going to slide right back into our classic Traveler RPG series today. We're starting a new mini series on world building. Yes, actually it's universe building, universe creation. I like universe creation. That sounds better. That's what we are going to do today. I'm excited about this. It's a pretty cool thing that you can do. Now, you would think that, man, this is just for the referee. No, it's not. It is actually for anyone who wants to do it. Anyone who wants to learn how to create a star system, they can do it, at least this portion of it. Hey, if this is your first time coming to the channel, I wanna welcome you. My name is Sermon Shiloh, and this is RPG Elite, the place where I focus on putting the RP back into RPG. And how I do that is by giving you tools, tips, tutorials, and real talk about the tabletop RPG space and culture. Let's do this, and let's slide right on into this right away. On the other side, I got the question of the vid and a couple other places that you can go to get some extra things to help you with your universe creation. Let's roll them. Okay, so here we are in Foundry and we're gonna be talking about sectors and subsectors. Now, Classic Traveler uses a hexagonal subsector grid to map out sections of a sector. Now, this is a subsector here. It's a 10 by 8, 8 across, 10 down, hexagonal grid. You're going to be using this to map out your system. Now, each hex is one parsec, which is 3.26 light years. In terms of travel, one hex is equal to one jump, two hexes, two jumps. Very simple in that regard. 16 of these subsectors, so four across, four down, they will make up a sector. It's huge, it's humongous. And if you are gonna go all in on Classic Traveler, then it is going to be a while before you get all of your subsectors mapped out for your sector if you're gonna go that deep. However, you can have plenty of adventures just in one subsector. Trust me, you can do one subsector and do that for an entire campaign for years. As a matter of fact, if you really wanted to get real granular with it, I mean, you can have an entire campaign on just one world or within one solar system, right? Our solar system has one world, would be Earth, but it has many worlds that you can go and explore and that can go on forever, y'all. So the game is flexible when it comes to that. And I love that about Classic Traveler. Now, creating a subsector with worlds it's called star mapping. That is what we're going to do today. So let's get started with the first step in our star mapping endeavor. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to see which of these hexes has a world. Now there's a 50% chance a world and its attendant stellar system it's going to be in one of these hexes. So you have to check each hex and throw 1d6, and then you're gonna mark the hex with a circle or however you wanna do it. If the result is a four, five, or a six, which means that there is a world there. If it's a one, two, or three, there isn't, you just leave it blank. Now you can adjust the chances of worlds. Like if you want more worlds, you can add a positive DM. If you want less worlds, you can put a negative DM in there. That's going to be up to you. We're just going to go straight with whatever the dice says until day. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do this and I'm going to, you know, do this right here. Pop this out over here. And we're going to roll 1d6. And let me pop it out over here, actually. So we're going to roll 1d6 here. And I'm going to go straight down because it's in order. In 101, 102, 103. We're just going to go straight down here until we get one that has a world. And we're just gonna roll 1d6 and see what happens. So let's go with the first roll and see if it happens. Ah, there it is. We got it on the first try. So 101 has a world. So what I'm gonna do, and I got my little icons over here. Yeah, 
I'm just going to put it right there. And that's what you're going to do. And it's going to be either a, you know, if you're just doing this old school style, you just put like a circle in there and all the rest of that. But we know that right chair, we have got a system with a major world there. All right. Let's go to step two. For the rest of our star mapping for this particular hex, we're going to be looking at the system contents table. Now, the first thing we're going to do for this next step is see what kind of starport, if it has a starport actually, in this system. Now, starports are bases where interstellar trade and commerce can take place, and each world has a chance of a certain type of starport. A starport may be exempt from planetary laws, but they could have similar restrictions in place as the planet. Oh, it just depends. Whatever floats your boat, it's going to be up to your referee. There are six types of starports that you can have. A, B, C, D, E, and X. Real quick here, let's go over them. So a class A starport is the best that you can have, baby. It's top tier quality. You can get refined fuel. You can get your annual maintenance overhaul there you get it has a shipyard which is at top of the line so if you want to build a starship this is the place where you would go to have it built or a non-starship depending on what you want built and there's also a chance of a naval or a scout base to be present here now a b starport is very similar it's just a little bit lower very similar it has the same kind of things though almost the exact same features as a class a starport really it's when you get down to c here all right, well, that's when we start getting it down to the kind of mediocre base, right? The starport here, it only has unrefined fuel. And the only reason why you would do that is if that there's no gas giant in the system and you need some fuel. It has a, again, mediocre repair facility. Scout base may be present, but no naval base is going to be present past a starport B. And it says this right down here. Do not roll if starport C, D, E, or X. They will not have a naval base. You know, in the Navy, they just want the best, baby. So A or B, and that's it. You go down to D here, that's poor facility, really. I mean, it has unrefined fuel, but it doesn't have any kind of repair or shipyard facility. So if you need something fixed, you're on your own. And there's a possibility that there may be a scout base present. You have an E base here. Well, this is a frontier installation, y'all. Essentially, it's just a, you know, a spot of bedrock out on the fringes someplace. It has nothing. It has no fuel. It doesn't have any facilities. There's no bases. It's just there. <laughs> and then X just means that there's no starport. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close that up, move this over here. And we're going to see with 2D6. What are we going to get here? What are we going to get as far as a starport in this system? Looks like we're getting a mediocre base, y'all. C. And I'm going to put this up here like this. All right. So there you have it. You just put a letter in there just to designate that there is that type of starport there. So we have a world here and a C starport. Stellar systems may have bases for military forces, specifically the Navy and the Scouts. Now you can have other arms of interstellar government for military branches or something like that, but the only one that we're gonna do today for the purposes of this example are Naval and Scout bases because it's on the system contents table now the system table indicates the die throws for specific kinds of bases but in our case we move this over a little bit remember we have a starport c and that means down here at the bottom we are not going to roll for a naval base remember naval base hey they only want the best baby however we will roll for a scout base but there will be a dm we will apply we're down here, it gives you some die modifiers for a starport C, B, and A. And the lower the quality of the starport, the more likely that there will be a scout base. 
So for our C, it's going to be a DM of minus one. Now, if it was a B, it would be minus two. And an A, it would be minus three. So on a D, you get absolutely no modifiers and you just roll and C. But we have a C. We only have a minus one. So I'm going to roll two die here and I'm going to put a minus one in there. And we're going to see exactly what we get in terms of a base or if we get a base. There's a minus one on a nine. And yes, we do. We do get a base. So we got a scout base here. Ain't dash out. Now I'm going to take this little thing right over here. And I'm going to move it right over here like that because that's what I have for my symbol for a scout base. What? All right. So we have a scout base. So we've got one more thing that we're going to need to do to map out this particular system in this hex. Well, let's get to it. The star system may have one or more gas giant planets. That's going to be similar to like Jupiter or Saturn. The presence of a gas giant allows streamlined starships to refuel by skimming. This eliminates fuel costs for the vessel and increases profit. We've already gone over skimming, so I'm not going to do that. But if you want to look at that video, it's going to be in a link down in the description. Gas giants are really common. You can see right here on the table, you got to throw a 10 plus for it not to be there. So we're just going to add two die just like that. I'm going to do this. Whoops. Don't do that. Add that there. We're going to add two die just like this. We're going to roll and more likely there's going to be a gas giant here, but we shall see. Yeah, there it is. So let's go ahead and take our gas giant here. Move it up there. All righty. And I'm going to close this out here. And so now we have all of the information just on a glance. There's a scout base there, there's a major world there, there's a gas giant, and it has a sea starport. And we can just look at that and get all of that information right there at a glance. So let's go ahead and see what a fully populated subsector looks like. This is the subsector that I had put together. This is subsector Day Spring. And it is Sector Melchizedek. So you can see here, you have several different starport types. You have D, C, A here. This here is representative of a gas giant. Again, this is for my scout bases. You can see there's not a lot of naval bases in this subsector. Got one here, one here. Uh, there's another one over here. Hey, we got like three. Is that it? Is that all we got is three? Yeah, we only have three naval bases, it looks like, here. And each one of these systems is named, as you can see, and that's what you're going to have to do. You have to name all the systems that actually, you know, have a planet in it. So it is varied here in terms of starports. You have a couple good ones. Most of these are pretty good starports, though. You got a lot of, lot of st A starports here. One here, one here, one here. Okay, this one doesn't have one. Uh, let me see. Or, well, it's not It's not really a starport, so. <laughs> I mean, it has one, but it's kind of like derelict. Um, well, you got B here, B here. This one doesn't have one. Um, not a, a lot of X's here. Like, this one doesn't have one. This one doesn't have one. So if you do happen to find yourself in these, I mean, you ain't going to have no help. But this is what it would look like totally filled out. And I could pull it back for you. So the whole subsector filled out here. And as you can see, man, I mean, you can have a lot of adventures just in one subsector and have tons of fun for as much time as you want to put into the game. Now, there are a couple things that you can add to this a couple different supplements one all the forms and charts supplement i think it's s12 and it's got a whole bunch of forms and things in there for just about everything character sheets the old school character sheets by the way and things for your starship construction and your starship data as far as once it's constructed as well as star mapping and world data and just about everything. It comes in at about, I think, 48 pages or something like that. You can go and grab that if you want to 
have that for all of your different worlds that you're going to build or your subsectors or everything, man, every form you can think of is in there, but you got to print them out. So there's the rub. You got to print them out. So if you want to have a hard copy of your things and just print out these forms, you can do that. Also, on top of that, let's say you just don't have the time. You just don't have the time to make subsectors and things like that. And, you know, you want a whole sector, right? Well, there is the Spinwood Marches supplement that has 16 subsectors, which make up one whole sector. It's already pre-made all of the world information, all of the system information's right there, already done, and you are good to go. So you can grab that if you don't have the time, or you can do kind of like a mishmash, right? You can grab that and then make your own subsector whenever you want to, and then add that into the mix if that's what you want to do. That's always an option, folks. I really like this about classic traveler really like this hey if you learned anything today got any value out of this video could you do a brother a solid and just crush the like button also if you are new want to stick around try out a brother try out the channel learn a little something about classic tabletop rpgs and other things then go ahead hit the subscribe button and the notification bell Let's go with the question of the vid today. And this one is a little different, a little different, but I try to tie my questions into the video that I just did. <laughs> so if you had a preference, which one of these three would you want your campaign to take place? Would you want it to take place within the same solar system where you have your one main planet, but there are a whole bunch of other planets out there, maybe unexplored, nobody knows what they are, you know, an interstellar campaign. Or would you want to branch out a little bit more and be like, you know, I like that, but I'd like to be able to use a starship and do some jumping and stuff. So maybe you just wanted to be in just one subsector. Or maybe you just want to go all in, y'all. Uh, forget that. We want the far flung adventures, man. We want a whole sector, 16 subsectors, so we can just go wherever. Which one would you want your campaign to take place and why? Let me know down in the comments below. Let's get some engagement going and I will read your comments. All right, y'all, that will be it for me. So you know what that means. So exit, stage left. Hey, if you missed any part of this series for Classic Traveler, I got a whole playlist of a whole bunch of stuff. So you can check it out right here. So until next time, God willing, folks, a brother's got to go and say, peace, 5,000 leets. I am. Howdy.